asking is where did you develop a lot of these questions from? So I appreciate you asking that because it's been 15 years of my life um, meeting kids in the sport. You know, when I say kids, it could be younger kids, age groupers, um, high school kids, college athletes, and pros. I have picked their brains and asked questions, and they ask me questions as well. And from all of that information and all of my observations over the years, I've developed this inventory that I actually asked my husband, who's a psychologist, to put together. And so I, that's what I love about this particular mental toughness assessment is we're getting to the real issues because they are real issues that came from real athletes that have developed over these past 15 years. Absolutely. And I've noticed there's also some things in here for, uh, for parents and coaches. Uh, was that kind of along the same lines, just some of the uh, situations that you've encountered in your 15 years uh, experience? Absolutely. I've learned so much, not only as a parent of athletes, but from other parents. I've heard about a myriad of problems, and um, I've been a part of many of the solutions, sometimes by accident, and just tweaked those solutions and, and kept adding to those and also just listening very carefully to what parents are saying and thinking and feeling because that is communicated to the athlete and the child or even the young adult and it can have quite an influence on you know how they perform and so by listening and learning and teaching parents how to do things differently it also influences the athletes and as far as coaches, as you know, I've probably learned, and I have learned, just as much from you and other coaches as they have from me. And that experience of getting the insight from a coach's perspective in order to help an athlete, to me, is invaluable. I need that information. It's very important. That relationship is so important. As coaches spend often much more time with athletes than their own parents. So what are some ways that the success guide is able to get swimmers involved uh, rather than I know with uh, swimmers in my past experience, you'll give them a notebook and sometimes they'll forget it or it gets drenched in their, in their backpack uh, and they leave it at home, you know, all kinds of different issues arise from that. So what are ways that they can get involved and that they stay on top of it? So the success guide opens up a lot of opportunity for the athlete to be involved. First of all, they seem to really like it because they open it up and it's very short. And one of my goals going into this was making sure that it didn't seem like homework and it didn't seem like a chore and it didn't put a burden or more heaviness on an already time poor student athlete parents are driving their children in all kinds of directions and the kids are and young adults are just overloaded with work so if you notice the title of my success guide is the gold medal mental toughness guide success guide and the reason i use the word guide in lieu of workbook is i'm already hypnotizing them with the word work if i put that on the cover so I kept that in mind and I was very sensitive to the needs of athletes as I've lived this with my own daughters and, and my son and, and other athletes. Okay. So when athletes open the success guide and they see that there's a minimum of 20 techniques that they can use to deal with any problem, whether it's at practice or in competition, they get really excited. They had no idea for the most part, other than learning how to visualize, just general vis visualization or breathing um, techniques, all of the possibilities that exist for them to be okay. All of the possibilities that exist for them to understand that they can change the way they feel about what's going on physically, even if they have butterflies or they start to get a headache or maybe they feel a little bit of panic, you know, their heart rate is starting to accelerate. 
they don't have to worry about that anymore because they have at least 20 ways to deal with that. And they're simple and easy and portable. And that's what they need. And you know, when you mentioned a book getting wet or maybe getting lost, I have solutions for that. I thought about that because I, again, I've lived this. They take a bag tag with them and it's laminated. I provide that for them and they put it inside their swim bags and they can take it anywhere. They, they could, you know, they could take it in the shower. They're not going to, but if they did, it would be just fine. And also if they forget their book, they can download it from the website. Thank you.